One of the main selling points of the R3 is the dual lens system. In this video, I will analyze how the 70mm telephoto lens performs in video and photo and how it interacts with the wide angle 28mm one. When I started using drones about 10 years ago, what I missed the most was the possibility of swapping lenses of difficult focal lengths, like in DSLR cameras. The first models of DJI prosumer drones supplied with the double focal lens was the Mavic 2 Zoom, which I used a lot at the time. Then came the Mavic 3, at first with a second lens of a whopping 7x factor, and then with a 3 lens system. The two lenses of the R3 are a 24mm wide angle with a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, a very wide aperture of f1.7 and a photo resolution of 12 megapixel. The other one is a 70mm moderate telephoto with the same specs but with an aperture of f2.8. When the first iteration of the Mavic 3 was released, the quality of the telephoto lens was inferior to the one of the wide angle one making it hard to integrate video and photo taken with the two lenses into the same project, but it has constantly improved since. With R3, DJI seems to have started immediately in the right direction. Let's start with the video sides, I will analyze the photos later on in this video. Footage of the same scene taken with the two lenses is very consistent. With the telephoto one, the clips are a touch darker, which is understandable due to the difference in aperture. The footage looks great, maybe with a touch of extra contrast and detail compared to the wide angle one. The white balance is almost identical, and the clips produced with the two lenses can be perfectly integrated into the same project. For me, the dual lens is a big winner. I love how I can go for a shooting and in a few minutes produce a much bigger variety of shots alternating the two lenses on the same scene. The 70mm lens is compatible with the three different color modes of the R3. The logs works fine and again the results is very similar to the one obtained with a wide angle. The same LUTs can be used for color grading. HLG is an excellent alternative, it is probably the one that gives the best results to my taste, but it still needs a bit of work. When I tried it the first time, all the footage I took was hugely overexposed, unusable. After several tests, I found that the correct exposure is obtained by underexposing by one and a half to two stop with the image on the screen quite dark. On a few occasions in low light situation I noticed some small artifacts in the shadows, but only randomly. The main limitation is that the files produced in HLG mode are extremely demanding in terms of computer resources. It is hardly possible to visualize the clips in real time and the encoding goes on forever. I trust DJI to fix these issues very quickly. The telephoto lens is compatible with all the different intelligent modes of R3. Spotlight, active track, point of interest, waypoints, cruise control, master shot, quick shots, and even hyperlapses. This is excellent for quickly gathering very interesting footage. With a longer focal length, any slightly abrupt move is magnified in the resulting footage, so it is suggested to use intelligent modes whenever possible, for smoother results. It is also very useful for tracking 
when we cannot get very close to the target. Mavic 3 Pro is supplied with 3 lenses, with focal lengths of 24, 70 and 166mm. Even though the extra long telephoto is occasionally useful for dramatic parallax effects, for footage of people or for tracking from long distance, the choice of the 70mm moderate telephoto as the second lens for the R3 is wise, as this is the most versatile focal length and can still provide some interesting parallax. For photography with all other drones, I used to only consider raw files, but with the R3 I have decided to also take into account the JPEGs for two reasons. More and more users have asked me to discuss the quality of the JPEG as they use them for publishing on social media with little editing. Also, I find that the processing of the JPEG file in R3 is excellent, a huge leap forward compared to the Mini 3 Pro and other previous DJI models. Here we can see JPEG file taken with a telephoto lens alternated with others with a wide angle to appreciate how similar is the processing and how well they can be integrated into the same project. With both lenses the quality is outstanding and they can certainly be used as they came out of the camera, although a touch of extra contrast and saturation can be at time beneficial. Again, I have the impression that the image taken with a 70mm lens have just a touch of extra contrast and detail, but it is hardly noticeable. And now a look at the raw files. The telephoto lens shows excellent detail and contrast, nice colors and a good structure of the sky. Watching side by side the image made with the two lenses, we can see that they are very similar and can be used in the same projects. The ones made with the wide angle have at times a slight magenta cast in the middle of the frame. I think I have a preference for the ones made with the telephoto. And again, I appreciate the different perspective and the wider choice offered by the dual lens system. I believe I will be using this drone a lot. The only functionality is not available with the telephoto lens is panorama photography, but it is still possible to make them manually using a photo editing program for very interesting results and huge resolution. I explain how to do it in my video about panorama photography with the R3. Click on the link above to watch it. The telephoto lens is compatible with the hyperlapse mode, and I find this is very interesting as I am addicted to this technique. Sadly, I have not received the ND filters, which are mandatory for serious hyperlapses, but I will do a video about it soon. Click on this link to watch my video about photography with the R3. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.